Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Okay, so you're a pastor. You're working in a church that has uh, probably a past, and uh, some issues have happened in the church. And so you right away um, are subject to some some rules, <laughs> and uh, and people are looking at you like, are you going to be the way it was also? Mm. And you have to break that that mold, uh, and and there's a lot of churches like that. A lot of churches are dealing with that. This is Revitalized and Replant with Mark Clifton. I'm Dan Hurst. There's Mark Halleck. And I, I love this. Mark says, let's let's talk about this, the Billy Graham rule. Yeah. Went, what? The, what? The Billy Graham rule. Well, Billy Graham had a, had a rule. He would never, ever be alone with a woman that wasn't his wife or daughter, ever, under in any circumstances. In any situation. In any, any situation. Circum- okay. In any circumstances. And, and frankly um, – I know a lot of churches and individuals who carry this. You say, well, wait a minute. Now, let's say let's say you're, you're driving down the highway. You're a pastor, right? It's pouring down rain, all right? You're driving down the highway, and there is a church member, and her car's broke down. What do you do? I'll tell you what the Billy Graham rule says. You stop. You give her your keys. You let her take your car and go get help, and you stay at her car until somebody comes back. You do not put her in the car with you and drive to go get help. The Billy Graham rule says, under no circumstances are you alone with a woman who is not your wife uh, at any time. And why? Well, for obvious reasons, because you, you, uh, you're probably not going to uh, morally uh, fail with a woman if she's, if she's not right. physically with you, all right? right? Yep. Now, we could get into more details about texting. We're going to do that in a minute okay. as well. Okay, okay. But – Billy Graham just had this hard and fast rule. Now, yeah. obviously, he was incredibly popular, incredibly well known, and could have been easily set up. Right? I mean, that's a yeah, that's very, true. That's yep. a very real true. And probably many people would have liked to have done that. And so he was fully aware of that. But if you remember, um, Mike Pence, the vice president, he he addressed this himself. That he he would hold mm-hmm. to what was called the Billy Graham rule: never be alone with a woman. I will tell you that 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 is. Even at the North American Mission Board, when we uh, – twice a year, we go through our conduct policies. We, we six, agree that we will not be alone with a woman that is not our spouse. We won't go to lunch with a mm-hmm. woman that's not our spouse unless our spouse is alone with them. So that's the Billy Graham rule. And it's a very hotly debated rule even mm. among pastors and churches. And the reason it's debated is this. Some people believe that it is – Misogynistic. In other words, it's basically saying we can't, you can't trust women. Mm. Therefore, you can't be alone with them. Mm-hmm. And that's so. There's you. If you want to hold, and I, I think so I it's believe not your fault is that what you're well. Saying? I said, I, I yeah. I, I think I think as a pastor, I'm going to give you what I believe. I think as a pastor, you need to engage in in some form of this Billy Graham rule, where you wall yourself off and you will not be alone with. Them. I'm going to tell you what. You can be a homely, overweight pastor. <laughs> <laughs> but because you're a pastor, mm. there are some women who are very emotionally needy who see you as a safe place to land, mm. all right? And you just got to be really careful about that, and you really got to guard your life and guard your heart. And the adversary – do I need to – do we need to start talking about the number of pastors who fail morally? Right. And basically when they do that, guess what? They're alone with a woman that's not their wife, that's all right? right. Yep. And they probably didn't start out – it probably ended up that way, didn't mm-hmm. start that way. So I, I, in my own life and here at the North American Mission Board, we really do hold to that. Now, the criticism is – and I knew I'm doing most of the talking here, but I'll get you guys involved in a minute. The criticism is, well, it could be misogynistic. Basically, you're just – and that's what they said about Pence. Mm. They said, well, you don't trust women. Well, you think they're all – no, it's, it's not that. It, it, it's not. It's that don't trust myself in mm. many ways. Don't trust the flesh in many ways. You said one time what Jesus said about – your eye and your hand. Mm-hmm. How serious mm-hmm. did Jesus take That's sin? Right. That's Talk right. to me about yeah, that. Yeah, cut out your eye. I mean, it, if you, even thinking lustfully, I mean, he takes everything up to a whole other level. Yep. Jesus does, right? And so, when it comes to to lust, this is where we can't play games with this stuff. I mean, that's the thing in our culture. I mean, how often do we talk about pursuing holiness mm-hmm. anymore? Right? 
And that's what we're talking about here. I mean, a part of it is a qualification of being a pastor is being above reproach, right? This is another, another aspect of this conversation is you could say, well, I don't really care what other people think. That's them. And I would say, well, in some ways you need to care what other people think because it, <laughs> what impression are you giving to those in your congregation, to the women in your congregation, to your wife and your children? This stuff matters. And I would say it matters more now than it did in Billy Graham's day. I would too. Do you know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, totally. I mean, that's the reality. With social media Dude. and how stuff can get oh out gosh. and people can can take things and turn situations against you. That Absolutely, you got to be very careful with what you're doing. And again, I don't believe it's, it's uh, misogynistic. I believe it is it is just caring for one another in a healthy way. And I, I, number two, is it – some people say it's overkill. Other people say it's absolutely necessary. Mm, mm. And people who say it's overkill will say, well, you know, you're, you're being completely um, um, legalistic. Right. You know, right. you're not living any grace there. You know, you're trying to, you're trying to live a legalistic, pharisaical kind yep. of life, yep. right? Yep. People who say it's absolutely necessary say, do I need to remind you of how many pastors fail morally on a regular basis? Here's what I would say. I think the objection that, that I can hear right now, and I get it, is – but wait a second, w- women need a pastor too, mm-hmm. right? And I say amen, that's exactly right, which means then we need, to, we need to be intentional about how are we pastoring women in our churches. And so even at our church, there's, we're, we're really careful about this. But as far as meetings where there are meetings I'll have with a woman, but my wife will be with me, um, meetings at the church even, because sometimes, you know, let's say a woman will stop by the church we have a room right, literally, we put in a glass door, we leave it open right there by our office staff so that I can have a conversation with a woman, mm-hmm. but I'm fully seen. Yeah, you're not alone. You're not I mean, alone. You may, you may be in that yeah, right, room, right. but there are other people in the that's building. Right, that's right. And there's a, and that's what number three on this list, and we'll put this list on the show notes. Number one, is it misogynistic? No. Number two, is it overkill or absolutely necessary? I think it's absolutely necessary. I don't think it's overkill. Yeah. Again, Jesus said, if you lust in your heart, you know, you've committed adultery. And to cut out your – I yeah. mean, Jesus takes sin. Sin is yeah. pretty dangerous, yeah. guys. It will destroy everything and, and to build a wall around it. So number three, though, is how functionally can yeah, you yeah, make yeah. it work gotcha. in the real yep, world? Yep, and that's yep. what you're talking about. Yeah. So we're not telling you you never meet with a woman. Yeah. You just never meet a, in a building yeah. alone with a woman. Yeah. And it, in your office, you don't close the door. Yep. You should have a glass window there yep. or something like that. So it's just really important right. for that, guys. So talk a little more about how you do that. Yeah. I mean, I just think, again, you, you just have to be so careful. But I think you, you as a pastor, you've got to love the whole flock. You've got to care for the whole flock. And you sure don't want to give an impression. I've been around guys – who I think um, meaning well give the impression almost like, you know, sorry, ladies, but I only pastor the men in this church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we don't want to go there. No. I mean, we, of course, we're pastoring men, we're pouring into men. At the same time, and I can just tell you from this perspective of abuse situations, or there's a lot of situations that are very sensitive in families. Uh, Right now, there's a woman in our church who's dealing with deep depression. She lost her mother suddenly. Um, she needs a pastor, man. She needs a pastor. And so, but how do we care for her spiritually in a way that doesn't compromise, um, you know, one of our pastors and that relationship or whatever? So, well, functionally, how you make it work is intentionally. You think about it. You don't just yeah. fall into a situation yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's dangerous. Yep. You you do as much as you can with another. It could be two of you there, but you're not alone. Right. Or uh, your wife. Alone is the key. Alone, alone is the key. Alone is the key word. Yes. Alone. alone. Well, here's here's one of the things that you have to realize is you you are just as accountable to your wife as you are to mm. that church member. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And so and so in, in my case, I don't even make a phone call to a woman. Unless my wife mm, is there, mm, you know, mm. I want her to hear my side of the conversation. Yep. She's not going to hear the woman's side of the conversation. I do keep that private, but I, but my wife is going to know what I'm saying. That's good, you know. And she's she may not even know who it is I'm talking to on the phone. You know, it may it may require that kind of privacy, but she knows what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? And I'm accountable to her as, as well as I am to a church member. On a side note, too, that's why your wife should have access to your complete schedule. Mm-hmm. All the time. She should know where you she are. She should know where you are, who right. you're with all the time. So functionally, how do you make it work by working at it and making sure that you're never 
alone with a woman that's not your wife. You can have other people there. You can be in the building with other people who are in the building. You have a glass window there. A door is open. Those kind of things. Don't go to lunch with a woman that's not your wife. Don't show up at a restaurant. Part of that's just the image. People will say, hey, the pastor was this lady. That Don't do that. Don't hold to this rule, and you will not get into trouble for it. And it doesn't mean you don't trust women. It doesn't mean you don't you think they're wicked. It, it means that you're just realizing you are held to a higher account, and Satan is always trying to find some ways to bring you down. And look, pastors are struggling with moral issues, and we just got to build every wall we can around that. So absolutely, functionally try to find ways to make it work. As I said, you know, even the, even in the situation, you know, someone's broke down, man, stay there, t- give mm-hmm. her your car, let her, t- you go, well, that's really crazy. No, I, I actually believe it just basically says, I'm going to hold to this principle, and I'm not, I'm not going to, to, to fall to it. And, and it's not easy to do. Yeah. I'm not telling you it's always simple, yeah. but be, be, be as, as, as passionate yeah. and as strategic as you possibly can. I, you said a word earlier. It's being intentional. It's being thoughtful. Yeah. It's thinking backwards. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if, by taking this step, that will lead to this step, which leads to this, which could lead to that result. Like we need to, we need to always be thinking proactively about, is this wise to be meeting in this place? Where might this lead? Whatever. And oftentimes we don't do that. And so we need well, proactive. Let me tell you functionally how to make it work. So I'm, I'm at Warnell, you know, sitting in my office. I'm the only one there, right? I don't have a secretary or anything. And so some lady comes and maybe she's like the preschool worker. This, this happened a couple of times. And she'll, she'll be in the building and she'll say, hey, you have a few minutes? I'll tell you what. At that point, you know, what I do and you, you say, yeah, let's, let's take a walk. So we, I, w- I would leave my office and I would go to like the front, there's a, there was a, a glass kind of door at the back of the church, and we would stand there and we, we would talk. I don't want her in my office with nobody else in that building but me. Now, you can just, you can criticize me all you want, but I, I really believe that that's, that's where we need to be. Mm-hmm. And that's, so functionally, you just got to be intentional about it yeah. and make it work. Now, there's a real issue here, and I, I'm not going to, I've already stepped in it a lot here, and I, you, I realize we're going to get a lot of comments and things like that, and that's fine. You can, but man, there's this issue of a single staff pastor and his secretary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what if what if you're not married? You know, what if you're a hmm. pastor and you're not married? Well, no, I'm going. I'm well. That's a different. Yeah, that's a whole different podcast. We should talk about that. But I'm talking here if you're the only staff person. It's so just there's you. two staff. There's a one pastor and a secretary. Exactly. And there are so many churches where you've got one pastor and a secretary, and they're both in that building half a day together all the time. And nobody's around. And nobody's around. Yeah. yeah. Now, you know, again, I, 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 you might say, well, you know, Mildred's a secretary. She's 82 years old. The pastor's 26. I mean, be real. I, I, okay. I, I get that. But I do think if you're a a – a pastor who has no other staff, and you have a part-time female secretary. I I would personally just arrange my schedule so that I'm not there when she's there, unless it was absolutely necessary, and I would have somebody try to have somebody else there with me. I just think you've just got to be really cautious about that. I'm not comfortable with it. I, I've been even to associational offices sometimes, and you see where you've got a. a a secretary and association and one director of missions. And, uh, and again, I, I know that happens a lot, but I just want you to think through it and, and the, what it looks like. And um, guys, we just live in a time when we just have to be extremely cautious about those things. So again, just to go back before we move into some really, really mm-hmm. dicey mm-hmm. situations, mm-hmm. you know, the Billy Graham rule, never be alone with a woman, all alone with a woman that's not your wife. And uh, is it overkill or necessary? I think it's necessary. Functionally, how do you make it work? With great intentionality. Specifically, if you're a pastor and you have one secretary, just try to do your best, not spend as little time alone together as possible. Have other people there, whatever. And then um, maybe even video. That's I meant to forget to mention that. But a lot of churches now, you can have security of video. So if in that secretary's office, have mm. the video running all the time. Mm-hmm. So there's a record of, of you and her so that nothing is seen. Which, so, by the way, just so you know, we, d- we did that in every room in our church. Yeah. So that for helps. For kids as well, yeah. for children, but also for this kind right. of thing. Right. So, yep. so security of video. All right. Number, th- number whatever we're on. Here we go. What about email, text, and social media? Now, that's a biggie. Boy. So let me tell you what we do here at the old North American. Okay, so first explain what you mean by that. 
texting another woman. So you're talking about texting, just one on one, like texting, just texting, even one on one texting. Texting one on one, either emailing a woman that's not your wife, texting a woman that's not your wife, or responding on a social media private message. I don't mean like commenting on Facebook. Okay, private message. I mean, messaging. if you make yep. a private message yep. on Facebook yep. or Twitter, what about those? And so basically, what, what we say here at the North American Mission Board, and, and what I would, would do as well, is now if it's your own personal secretary, um, yeah, that probably you just have that relationship and you, it's, a, it's an official relationship. But anybody other than your personal secretary, uh, if, if there's a – say the lady at church emails you and says, Pastor, that was a great message. I really love it. It really meant a lot to me. Then you just simply email her back and, and on it you, you, can, you can copy uh, a staff person. A deacon, some just copy somebody. Mm-hmm. That's right. And say, Man, that was great. Thank you so much. But copy somebody else so that they know what you're not t- communicating directly with her one on one. Same, you know, I do the same thing with text. Same thing with social. Just be very, very careful, guys, in this day and age about engaging email online conversations with women who are not your wife. That's why that CC is there. That's CC why that C- that's and right. Use it. I, I'm glad you hit that. That's one of the rules we have at Archer. UCC all the time mm-hmm. in these kind of situations, mm-hmm. and frame your email in that way. I mean, yes. be, be you know, be honest. Hey, you know, I've I've added uh, Mark here. He can yeah. help us with this, exactly. whatever. But CC folks all the time. So that's like the digital version of the Billy Graham rule yeah. of not being alone. There's another thing you can do too, and that is you can create an archive, mm. so that and that's a CC email address where everything goes to that archive. There you go. And uh, and now there may be only you know three or four people in the church that have access to it, deacons or mm-hmm. you know the elders or something like that. But that way, every piece of mail then goes mm-hmm. to that archive. So. Wow! And you know, if you have this Billy Graham rule, then you never have to wonder. Look, I'm not alone with a woman that's not my wife. I don't go to lunch with a woman that's not my wife. So I've got this woman who wants to come see me tomorrow night. I've got to figure out who's going to be in the building besides me. You know, is my wife, can she be there? Maybe she's not in the meeting with us, but she's outside going to do some work in the hallway or Mm -hmm. whatever. But just being intentional about Mm -hmm. it. And then again, digitally, social media, carbon copy somebody, everything. Do not communicate one-on-one with a woman who's not your wife, even if it's something incredibly simple like – what a great sermon. I really appreciate mm-hmm. you being my pastor. I have this really need uh, I need to talk to someone about. Say, well, great. I've included uh, Bob on there. He's one of our main deacons. He'd love to pray with you about that, too, just so she knows you're not one-on-one. Now, well, and, did and, you just say yeah. carbon copy? I did. I'm old. <laughs> Isn't that what that means, CC? I, I don't I know. know. Do you remember carbon copies carbon where you'd copies. put the piece of paper in there and you would do three copies at once? No, one? I don't remember. Oh, that. Whatever. Hey, and let me just make this one note. Yeah. I think, again, why this is so important. I've heard so many stories of pastors where the affair begins. It's that whole thinking backwards. It begins with one-on-one text messages Uh Mm. over and over and over again. We're hearing, especially with younger generations, it's so easy. You're sitting there before bed, your wife's asleep. You know, I wonder what so-and-so's doing. And all of a sudden you're, I mean, you know what I mean? And so that's why just, this has got to be a non-negotiable. It does. It's a non-negotiable. I agree. And I, I think the social media and texting and emailing just, and I do. I don't think. I think being alone with a woman that's not your wife, even if she's your secretary or something, you just gotta you gotta nix that. And then your spouse needs to have access to every one of your passwords. You don't need to have anything mm. on your phone or your laptop that she can't see. Mm-hmm. Amen. And so that's right. Your email, your social media, your Facebook, your Twitter. She needs to be able to look at everything, so that if she grabs your phone, you're not panicking about anything. You you need each both spouses, husbands and wives. You yep. need to make sure you both have access. You don't keep secrets from each other. Yep. I mean, so share and even your if it's passwords. not your spouse, if you don't have a spouse, then somebody. Exactly. Thank you. You mentioned that a minute ago about somebody. a single. If you're a single pastor, yeah. now if you're a single pastor, all right, and you're dating someone, then you're probably going to be alone yeah. with her. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be realistic. It's a little bit different. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've, I've, I've got a friend who's a single pastor who's single for many years, and God brought a, a, a single young lady to his life, and so they've been dating. But he would even acknowledge he's a pastor of a small First Baptist Church town, county seat town. I mean, they got to be careful about yeah. things. And so, but, but yeah, certainly. But even if you're a single pastor, uh, you got to be very careful. Make sure that there's a deacon or someone who has access to all of your passwords. Yes. 
Please, guys, yes. do that. By right? the way, my wife cannot remember her passwords. She can't. <laughs> she'll never remember mine. And she said, well, what's your password? I said, honey, it's your name. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, guys? Here's the thing. We should want this. Yes. We should want this. I mean, if, if there's something in your heart oh. that, that, that is going, I don't like this. I don't like this. Uh, then I would say right now, go to prayer. There you go. Say, Holy Spirit, what's going on with me right now that yeah. I don't like this? We should want this. How dare we? I don't want to put the name of Christ in, in uh, the shame, the name of Christ in any way, my family, my church, my ministry. And so, again, that's the heart stuff that goes, if you don't desire this right now, ask God to change your mm-hmm. heart right. that you would desire and, this. And there's a whole nother area where our 20 minutes is about up. If we, if we go longer than 22 minutes, it costs us extra. So we can pay for the studio by the, anyway. Uh, so you can send your donations to GoFundMe. <laughs> at, but um, one of the things we didn't talk about was really like deacon ministry. Oftentimes, older churches, or all churches, will have a deacon's ministry, and deacons are, are men, and many times they need to deal with women, with mm-hmm. widows. So you've got a deacon who goes to a widow's house. Guys, think through that. Deacons go in pairs to that widow's house. Yeah. Don't go alone. Or mm-hmm. deacon, take your wife right. if yep. you go to that widow's yep. house. Don't go, or that young mother's house, for example. Yes. Don't yep. go alone. So again, pastor, if you'll model this rule for your church, and then your leadership will follow it, you're just not... And so the, that leads us to our last thing yeah. that we'll put on the notes here. When in doubt, leave it out. Yeah. Right? Yep. yep. I mean, if you're questioning, should I do this or not, then don't do it. That's right. And just leave it out. Yep. And, and err on the side of caution. Always. That's what this whole Billy Graham rule is. It's not saying every time you're with a woman alone, you know, something terrible is going to happen. You're erring on the side of caution. Yep. You're building – and you're also respecting your wife and all – and look, I realize in the secular world, my wife works in the secular world. And I realize in the secular world, this is just nuts. Yeah. Guys go to what, what, lunches all the time with their coworkers all alone. I think, well, you know what? How does that work mm-hmm. out in the world? I know. That's right. I mean, let's be honest, yep. right? And so I think we live in a different world. So you can disagree with us. We'd love for you to disagree with us as long as you subscribe. If you're going to disagree, you got to subscribe. Let me close but with go one Go ahead thing. and subscribe. Let me say before we hit this, I do want to say this, yep. and I've mentioned it before. So I've got this running list that's now up to 63 names of pastors I've known. I've respected, I've looked up to who are now out of ministry because they've been unfaithful in their marriages. And I just, I keep it on my phone as a constant reminder. And guys, this is where it starts. This is why this is so serious. It's, this is about affecting, I I think about the thousands upon thousands upon thousands, literally of lives that have been impacted by pastors who just said, eh, it's just a little text thread. Right. What's the big deal? Right. This is a really big deal. It's a huge deal. It's a huge deal. And so we need God's help. We need his grace to give us conviction in this area. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor, or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.